I for a kind on everything. I gotta live like a king. <laughs> hey, catch this rhythm. You feel that? That's called playerism. I'm on the scene, a player clean, poker face, four queens, I got four of a kind on everything. Diggers, living elite, I don't feel complete without kicking at my feet in a Rolls Royce every week. Baby, this is deep, listen close when I speak, I need to at least, cause I'm too much. I'd be a fool if I love him, love him. You'll be a fool if you trust him, trust him. Here with my niggas, we keeping it gangsta. gangsta. Yeah, I'm a slayer, I'm just keeping it player. Player, player, player. I'm fucking her now, we're man, eating it later. Ugh. Cause maybe why he is a hater. Hater, 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 hater. I'm wearing all black like I'm being a raider. Raider, 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 raider. You talk to police, we call you a traitor. Traitor, 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 traitor. I'm running the city, they call me for favors. I'm running the city, they call me the mayor. It's getting political with me. My street presidential, she give me no Quit banging my line, ho. Quit banging my line, ho. When you see me act like you don't even know me, ho. When you see me act like you don't even know me, ho. Come on, baby, get a clue. How you do what you do? How do you? Fall in love with me, but I'm not in love with you. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Oh, we got a funny one. Literally. I think you guys all saw a little Kelpie get uh, packed out. It gets like that. It gets like that every now and then. You kind of need that in your life. Keep you on the straight path. I wouldn't be surprised if that was the not the first time he's been packed out like that, but let's figure out what we can learn from the situation for there is much that Kelpie expresses about his generation. There is much that he symbolizes in the effeminate nature of the male today. There is much that he represents in terms of how social media culture has the male uh, thinking with the female's mind. And we're also going to talk about how not to get killed, right? How not to get killed. These are important things. We're going to go through this. And hopefully Lil Kelpie is watching. Uh, I did uh, send out a couple uh, invites via the Saints. So if he would like to join in at some point, happy to bring him on screen. Uh, let us start with our tradition, which is to show love to those who show love to us. May I first acknowledge none of the above since intuition rights will catch the replay. I do appreciate that. Thank you very much. As I don't come on here every day. AR writes. Before you talk, wait, quote, before you talk to anyone, figure out who you're talking to. It's life-saving advice. A quote from uh, Marquette Devon Burton. It's life-saving advice right there. May I also acknowledge uh, Kendall comes in via PayPal. He writes, Peace of the Saints Intuition. The lead up to the A whooping is worth a breakdown for the saint. Thank you for the ism, major mind and soul on YouTube. Indeed, and we shall go into that because you're right. Uh, things don't just happen out of nowhere. And there are two things that we actually want to do. Not only do we want to analyze the conversation that led up to the beatdown, we also want to look at this other interview that Lil Kelpie did because it teaches us a bit about his psychology. And not only during the conversation between Kelpie and Suspect do we learn about Kelpie and the nature of this generation's boys, but we also learn a little bit uh, from Suspect. There's some things that he too, um, I'd like to advise him on, you know, just for his. Uh, his freedom and safety. Uh, anyways, one thing I want you guys to know is that I'm not going to actually play the beat down, uh, the uncensored beat down. You'll get to get a sense of what's going on. But if I were to play the uncensored beat down, uh, this video will be marked uh, by the Google Censorship Corporation as inappropriate for minors, which is to say for people who are not signed into YouTube while viewing the videos, which is most people. A podcast for men writes only here to say happy Thanksgiving. Appreciate it. Happy Thanksgiving to you. And may we always engage in our tradition, which is to think about one thing we're thankful for before every meal, not just on the holiday. <laughs> says, what is a Kelpie, bro? I was wondering the same thing. I was wondering the same thing. Dev writes, he didn't even fight back. Well, when you're used to fighting with your mouth, you're used to tongue wrestling. And then you end up in real life and you have to deal with real things and real problems. You tend to fall apart. That's the problem with this generation. 
That's precisely why I don't know why anyone on the internet would have my name in their mouth. <laughs> you dig? And I, and I do warn them. But there will come a time when the chickens come home to roost, as they say. And for Kelpie, it came sooner than later. Let's get into this work. Please do confirm once the video comes on that both the audio and the picture quality is reasonable. And this did not happen um, as recent as you might think, as I was at the No Jumper studio um, yesterday. And I think this video was also posted yesterday. So th this did not happen yesterday to my knowledge. Carrying on. No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today, pretty excited because we have somebody who's uh, making a big splash on the scene. Yes, sir. Kelby is in the... So, one, I, I did notice that Adam has this uh, scarring and scabbing above his eye. I don't know if he also was in a bit of a scuffle. But I'd be curious about that if anyone has any knowledge on that. And he was kind and gracious enough to give Kelpie a a favorable introduction, although I think we all know that Kelpie is generally viewed as comic relief. You know, no one really takes him seriously. And we often forget that he is a boy. In the eyes of the law, he's an adult. But at age 19, and with his mentality, he's a boy. And so at some level, I feel sorry for him, and I hope that he's tuning in because there's much that he needs to learn. Hello, Kelpie, uh, also known as Kelpie the P. As a matter of fact, you can call me whatever you want. Just don't call me broke. So I found that to personally be disgusting. He's trying to counterfeit having a mouthpiece, which he clearly does not have. Number one, he uses the you know threadbare phrase of you can call me fill in the blank, the P. You know, some Internet nerds will call themselves pitiful, the P, criminal, the P, dophile. You know, so th this formulation of a name is very common among the uh, multitude of fake internet peas. So uh, that's not very impressive. It just shows you that Kelpie is pretty much mimicking what he sees on the YouTube screen. That's number one. And number two, he says, you can call me, in, but just don't call me broke. This is also a well-worn phrase that we've heard a billion times. And so it doesn't sound very clever. So it's just like you're you're a really bad photocopy of things we've seen a thousand times. It hurts my heart. OH writes that SAS and varsity jacket looks cold. Peace to the Saints. Indeed, it is cold. <laughs> I have one. <laughs> and it's very high quality as well. Uh, you can check that out at T-H-E-S-A-S-N.com. I'll definitely be sporting mine sometime soon. Carrying on. And thank you for the support. Much appreciated. So That's yeah, right. Out here today. And then co-hosting with me. Vic says, Gabriel Displurger, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, almighty for the album, because the record too short, you dig what I'm saying? No, the real deal, you know what I'm saying? Holyfield, you know what I'm saying? Not the impersonation. Damn, he so one thing I like about the gentleman, I, I've never seen him or heard of him that I, I'm familiar, that, that I realize so he, this gentleman is very new to me, but he seems like an up-tempo, pleasant person. You know, he's smiling as he talks. And that, that's an enchanting thing. People like that. So, you know, shout out to him. Now, similarly, he is uh, he's a bit familiar in what he's saying. You know, real deal, holy feel. This is common in the African-American speech culture, particularly Southern. Um, you know, but, eh. And he's saying, you know what I'm saying, a lot, which is, you know, you'll hear... Uh, uh, a lot of people on cross country pimping type videos talking like this, you know, pimps from Memphis and, and things like that. Uh, but you know, it is what it is. That, that doesn't mean that you're, you're fake in every industry. There are things that are common, right? There are common personalities, there are common styles of dress, there is a common language. And so there you go. But anyways, for me off rip, I'm like, ah, this is a setup. This is a repeat, essentially, of the situation when Sharp was interviewing Lil Kelpie and basically flamed him. And this is another setup of that because that obviously ran up views. It was very popular. And Kelpie's just immature, foolish, and attention-hungry enough that he'll come back for a round two. He's kind of similar to that light-skinned Canadian broad uh, that I flamed. You know, even though she was flamed to death, 
she's willing to get reflamed if it can give her just a little bit of attention because attention is the greatest cur uh, currency to these personality types. <laughs> Um, so there you have the, the gentleman. I think his name is Suspect. He just came with a whole little monologue like OJ the Juice. <laughs> that was fire. Um, okay, so I wanted to like hop in here yeah. and attempt to, you know, have a conversation that perhaps can build on some of the other conversations that have already happened. Yeah. So let's yeah. let's lay this all out. So yeah. you had a very, very uh, viral appearance on Soft White Underbelly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Tell me what happened. Like what? What was your life like in the lead up to that? Why did you decide to do that? Uh, in the lead up to that, I was uh, I was hustling. I don't want to say specifics, but I was doing a little a little shit in the streets, and then basically I was like, you know I what? Feel like you so I'm already disgusted. It's vomitous to hear anyone purport to be hustling and doing things on the streets, particularly when it was recent, right? It's it's a difference to when I'll say in a book that, you know, when I was 12 years old, I was doing fill in the blank. Well, I'm not about to be prosecuted for a crime that's 20 plus years old um, when the laws have even changed that if I did the same activity today, it wouldn't necessarily be as heavy a crime. Now, that's quite different. And you know, you're past the statute of limitation on certain things. Now, this is just goofy. So we see that he's clearly seeking attention, not realizing that he seeks attention at the expense of his freedom, potentially. Uh, quite sad. But he's also one of those personalities, as they say, loose lips sink ships. He's one of those personalities that you end up around them and you'll find that they might end up having you catch a case on accident. You feel me? You can never tell any secret or any information to this personality because they're going to babble. This is common today in general. This is specifically common with those who are seeking internet fame. Very sad. Shout out to Joseph. Comes in by a cash app. Writes tuition. Happy holidays. Appreciate that. And happy holidays to you and your family. Johnny comes in as well. Sends in tuition by a cash app. Truly appreciate that. Indeed. Carrying on. You've already filled this in about what you were doing. Yeah, I mean, well, well, Sharp made some accusations about what I was doing. I don't want to admit or uh, deny those, but okay. yeah, basically I was getting money and shit, and then that hustle came to the the sad thing is that this kid is such a uh pick me. Like he's a kid that got picked last for the we're playing dodgeball. You hear me? There ain't nobody wanting him on their dodgeball team in the third grade. People used to like slap his milk over on his lunch tray, let, let his milk spill into his like, you know, all of his other into his like mashed potatoes. Uh, he's the kid everybody did dirty because he's clearly just not a winner. I respect the fact that he wants to be a winner and he's making a great effort, but he's for sure failing at it. If he'd follow the three sentence Bible, I think that he'd be much better off. And sentence number one is be yourself. He can't follow that until he figures out who am i hell no i mean he's from orange county you guys might not be from southern california i am in orange county when you think of that you basically think of uh attractive cougars that have had their bodies and face enhanced with a lot of surgery and probably a little bit too tanned and are dating some guy in upper management in a major corporation yeah that's orange county that's basically what it is soccer moms and uh you know people who were tricked into marriage to an abrupt end when i got raided so then i switched into another one because i've seen some people that needed help and you know i just jumped into the game describe getting raided though oh uh well i was outside vaping and shit and like you know still hustling and the girls were inside um and first off this you were not raided bro number one you were not raided this story is completely ridiculous i'm not saying the police didn't show up but it sounds like a major exaggeration when you're talking about being raided. Generally, that's not your local police department that's doing that, number one. And then number two, when you say you were outside vaping, they would have took you down like straight away. They wouldn't like have you hanging out. <laughs> no, this is just ludicrous. And furthermore, when you're raided, there are significant numbers of uh, law enforcement personnel to hear him tell this story. It sounds like it was like four to six individuals. Here we go. And basically just got a no-knock raid. They came in, they pulled me outside some undercovers and they like drew their guns on me and shit like that, put me in the squad car. 
And then they all just were like inside my house. And like, we know he's lying because his story doesn't add up already. He said already, he stated, I was outside vaping. Then he starts telling the story and he says, they pulled me outside. Well, were you outside vaping or were you inside to be pulled outside? And lastly, if you vape, you're probably an idiot. Just side note, you look stupid vaping. A lot of people feel like they look cool. You don't. You look stupid. Okay. Thank you. Just in case you were wondering. May I also acknowledge Manuel with the baller alert. He writes, happy holidays, peace of the saints. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And happy holidays to you as well. Oh, and shout out to Trevor. He just copped the Varsity jacket. And I want to remind you guys that there are certain products that we, we have that do come out in limited numbers. The Varsity jackets will be uh, one of those products, as you've seen. Previous versions have sold out. This is a much higher quality version. That's why the, the price is uh, higher than the previous versions. Oh, we got a warrant to search your person and your your vehicle and, and your house. But they were suspicious of you. Probably. Yeah, they, they were trying to say in that I was like, you know, drug dealing or, or something like that. OK, and but you don't have a case as a result of this. Oh, uh, no, nah, I never heard back from them. that was the weirdest thing. Number one, shout out to Adam for asking the most obvious question, which is if you got raided, why are you not in jail? Number one. Number two, you stated that you were outside vaping and the girls were inside still hustling. Well, further. What do you mean by still hustling? And if they were hustling, which is to say working, preparing product, breaking down product, packaging product, whatever the case is, how did the raid not successfully uncover product? So it's almost impossible not to uncover. So clearly lying. Secondly, when he says, oh, I don't know, I just didn't hear back. That's not how the law works, my boy. Number one, if you get raided, oh, for sure, you're heading off in that paddy wagon. You're not about to go home that night for sure. And if you got raided, it's highly likely that your bail, bail is going to be astronomical because you've already cost the government a significant amount of money because they have to throw meaningful resources at you and they have to do significant planning. For example, you know, I know people who happen to have like a lot of different places they sleep at, like they might have a couple of suites, a couple of apartments and a house because they don't want to give the police time to plan because the police have to plan for raids. They have to make sure that it's safe for the people who are bystanders and civilians nearby. So Lots of time and planning goes into this kind of thing. So uh, I'm not buying it. There's no way you didn't go to jail and end up, you know, waiting you know, without bail or with high bail. And for sure you would have been charged with something because you're not going to be raided until there's a meaningful amount of evidence that justifies a raid. And lastly, if they got all that and and they raided you and and you're out walking free and you you really were hustling, then you're probably a snitch or a rat. And in his case, I wouldn't minimally be surprised if he was a snitch or a rat. Not in the least bit. I would be surprised. In fact, I'd be shocked if he wasn't a snitch or a rat. <laughs> you feel me? Like, that would shock me. Shout out to Matthew. Comes and writes, Pete to the Saints. Johnny comes right back. He writes, is that MDB slash No Jumper interview coming soon? Good question, actually. I to, um, I'll go ahead and shoot them a text today. Number one, to say thank you uh, for the support and also see when it's coming out. Thank you for the question. Honestly, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And so then you decide, like, how did the software underbelly opportunity even come about? Uh, well, I've been trying to do some, like, online stuff and just get that internet money and also promote uh, my girls' OnlyFans. Okay. So number one, when he says, I've been trying to <laughs> do some stuff to get that internet money, essentially he's saying, I've been searching for people who will give me some airtime. That's what he's saying. I've been searching for airtime, which is to say he reached out to soft white underbelly. That's, that's the bottom line. He reached out to soft white underbelly. That's the, essentially the answer. His appearance, I find to be comical. This particular hat, um, people in my neighborhood from the projects will wear this hat um, for the city and their gang color was black. They were BKCK, which is to say they weren't Bloods or Crips. It was basically like, they're like, screw everybody. Um, this kind of appearance is not typical of a kid from Orange County. He's basically fabricating the appearance of a, a, a black kid from an urban environment. And it is quite pathetic. And all of his tattoos are just really cute. and just It's all a part of a costume. And it, it's sad to see, truth be told. Uh, so basically, check out Crystal Roses on OnlyFans, by the way. She's going up. Um, but no, nah, basically, I was just trying to promote that stuff. So I went on Soft White, talking about my story. And then, yeah, it just kind of blew up from there. So what was the feedback like? Like, what would you describe as the most common 
comments that you saw in response to the soft vulnerability thing that adam's eyes are barely open did did this man smoke a, a bowl before this interview got going i'm gonna go ahead and say he did because low-key like his eyes are damn near closed we're really yeah. driving it being viral oh just a lot of hateful shit about the way i was dressed mostly people was like and also i feel like they took a lot of the shit like this is funny i just i just realized this man has two chains that have dollar signs on them this is some of the most tacky branding ever i mean if he's been trying to mimic the african-american lower class he succeeded at that because i feel like consistently when i see a dollar sign or i see someone talking about getting the bag it's always someone who doesn't have the bag and someone who doesn't have dollars <laughs> it's, it's like a you know it's like one of those animals the weak animal in the wild that's trying to mimic a stronger animal to intimidate or impress others in the environment it is quite pathetic but anyways this this young boy has uh two chains with dollar signs on them me i would have went for the greater value i'd have probably had the pound the british pound symbol since the currency is more valuable maybe a bitcoin symbol carrying on I said out of context, like when I said I was homeless, that was because I just got evicted after the raid. The apartments had like kicked us out with some section eight that I was staying with my family and the girls. This so guy is a complete imbecile. Um, I did see a little bit of that off a uh, soft white underbelly interview. And he says that for like one of the early things he does is we're homeless. I'm like, how are you a P and you're homeless? That doesn't add up. That's like, I like you're a P and you're homeless well then what's the point of being a p because i thought it was about money you dig i thought the outcome had to be income you hear me what you got these girls doing out here if you're homeless the purpose of this whole p and hoe thing is about the bread if you ain't getting the bread what you're doing problem is that you're a drug addict and your girls are drug addicts and you're smoking it up or snorting up the the profits and that's why you end up perpetually in poverty and the sad thing is that he said he lived in section 8 housing which one lets you know why no one likes to pay taxes who has common sense and money because you're giving money to imbeciles and ironically it's supporting criminals to create crimes that make your society less worth living in and what's more the section 8 money that's going to subsidize this housing for his mother is being utilized by an adult male and two adult females all three of whom are drug addicts and criminals wow thank you to the left that is the democrats and all those folks appreciate you guys setting up that opportunity for scumbags to benefit shout out to walton he also copped the the varsity jacket in medium which i think medium is a size that i have as well and when you get it <laughs> you will be impressed i guarantee you with that one So they kicked us out of that and then a lot of people were like oh why is he dressed like a party city pimp fake chains and all that but you know that had me rolling he said people who were watching his soft white underbelly interview said he was dressed like a party city pimp, a party city pimp and i'm pretty convinced that party city is like a halloween costume store <laughs> and then i saw the interview i was like ah i see i see what they're talking about it was true now he's about to claim right now that he was doing it for attention yeah everything you do is for attention we can add that up but surely you thought that you look good which is the sad problem here you know side note recently i was in when i was in london i was at a, a particular place and a gentleman uh, i had asked a gentleman something and he got defensive and i basically you know, had to share an aggressive word with him and then all of a sudden he became nice when he realized like nah bro like it's not like you don't want to turn up like that. Then he became a really nice guy. And he says to me like, oh, like, you know, what do you do for a living? I was like, yeah, I make YouTube videos. He says, oh, like Andrew Tate. He was like, is that why you're like peacocking in this outfit? And I was like, no, this is not peacocking. I'm from Los Angeles. I'm an African-American from Los Angeles. We are the most flashy people on planet Earth. We set the standard for cool. Peacocking is when some corny white dude named Neil writes a, a Bible of game game as a concept where did that come from the african-american pimp culture african-american it's so rare to have a white guy who's a pimp that you it's like having a white rapper or having a white basketball icon not to say they can't do it they can but it, it's very uncommon they are not the prevalent type that constitutes a culture which is to say you could never say that a black guy from los angeles is peacocking no this is my actual culture I was raised like this. My mother dressed me crazy when I was a kid because we live like that. 
And that's the sad thing with the commercialization or the commodification of certain cultures is that you got goofballs. They've only seen it on TV. So when they see the genuine article, they don't realize like, oh, this is the person. These are the people that the style is based on. This is where it comes from. I'm looking at the genuine article, the origin. For example, another dumb thing I heard from a Londoner. I was talking to this uh, African Londoner, a female, and this goofball broad says, have you heard of drill music? I was like, yeah. She's like, yeah, you know, in UK, UK, we have this rap called drill. We invented it. And it's basically a little bit different because the beats are kind of like, I was like, whoa, whoa, you didn't invent anything. No, drill comes from Chicago. And side note, I used to live in Chicago. And I was just thinking, are you so dumb that you think you've invented something that you didn't invent? Furthermore, one of the main things about drill music is rapping about guns. You don't even have guns in the UK. How stupid is this concept? Anyways, just side note real quick. Just want to let you guys know. So anyways, you got Lil Kelpie trying to dress like the pimpin'. He not the pimpin'. This is the pimpin'. You hear me? It's custom, though. It's custom. You hear me? Yeah. I saw a nerd in the chat. He thought it was funny. Uh, Marquette, I have to say, I don't like your jacket. And bro, you, you don't even have enough money to comprehend my jacket. If I asked you what material it was, you couldn't even tell me. If I asked you what designer made the fabric, you couldn't even tell me. You don't know anything about this. I don't shop for clothes. I shop for fabrics. And I like them floral and elaborate. You dig? Silk everywhere. Cashmere, cotton, only if the blend is right. Right? You dig? So shut your mouth, sit down, all right? You don't know nothing about this. Carrying on. It's all real. You know, the the outfit, I feel like that's the most thing that people said was being disrespectful. But I was just doing that to get attention. But all my jewelry is legit. My, just imagine a male saying, I was doing that to get attention. That's one of the most shameful sets of words that could ever come out of a man's mouth. I was doing that to get attention. Not even women want to admit that they do things to get attention. This is outrageous. Quite sick, sad, and disgusting stuff. So, uh, been diamond tested, suspect, you know. fill me in on that. Like, is there yeah. is there something expected of you before you've earned the stripes to wear certain types of like pimp outfits? Nah, it wasn't even that. It was like we felt like that shit, like the equivalent for to to, to get everybody to understand, kind of like kind of like blackface. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like that shit was kind of like like it, it looked like a costume. You you get what I'm saying? Right. It's like he I, came I in here. He came in here wearing. Shout out to suspect because I think that was a very apt analogy. It was very intelligent to say it was similar to blackface, which is to say that you look ridiculous and you're imitating a different culture that is not your own. And we're not saying it's not his own because he's white. We're saying it's not his own because he's from the Orange County. You did. If he was black, you're from Orange County. This ain't you, brethren. You ain't know nothing about this. So. That's a very good metaphor. One thing I don't respect is the fact that Lil Kelpie is interrupting Suspect while he's speaking. And Suspect did not interrupt Adam, nor did he interrupt Lil Kelpie while they were speaking. And first off, why are we calling this kid Kelpie? What is his government name? I'm going to just call him Jonathan. He looks like a, a nice little sweet kid named Jonathan. He has little dimples. Honestly, to me, he looks like a, like a, a, a I'm not going to use the word. I'm messing around and get banned if I tell you what he really looked like. But let's just say he looks like he transitioned. He has no testosterone whatsoever. Also has no facial hair, which is not helping the situation. Carrying on. And that shit like in his head, like, oh, this is what pimps is supposed to look like. I got my little dollar sign chain, my yeah, little fur I got coat. Two of them. But yeah. do, you, do you feel like, you know, you could have rocked the same fit or something similar? But I mean, I'm true to this, so of course I could. But that's the so same. <laughs> I like that. He said, I'm true to this. Of course I could. Uh, by the way, shout out to Dallas. He didn't just, you know, got some real drip. He got the Sassin Bar City jacket. He also got the the chain uh, that Daniel John produces from T-H-E-S-A-S-N.com. And he got uh, the five panel floral hat, which I actually was just uh, recently wearing. That's a cold one. I got that one myself. And I got the Bar City. Actually, I have everything that you bought. Everything you bought, I also bought as well. Appreciate the support that goes out to Daniel John, goes out to, um, I just want to acknowledge the people that made these products, goes out to Daniel John and goes out to Brandon and goes out to. Oh, my. Like I'm black. 
blackface. You get what I'm saying? Like okay. it's, it's like wearing blackface. But so, so it's like, but aren't there I, white pimps there at these pimp conventions yeah, yeah. and white shit? Folks, white of folks, white folks is a popping ass white pimp. And you didn't I even know who he was. No, no, no. Until this is sad. Did, did my boy Adam just say pimp conventions? Pimp conventions. Now this is how sick minded people are. This is how you separate winners from losers. If you're operating in an illegal business, you should be operating under the radar. If you're going to a pimp convention, pimp, this is a job title for a job that is illegal. I repeat, pimp is a job title for a job that is illegal. If you're going to a pimp convention, you might as well just invite the police. You heard me? You might as well just invite the police with you. I mean, it's completely ludicrous. And what's worse than that is it's like you're flaunting the fact that you're engaging in crime and you're accepting awards and taking photos and taking videos. They call this evidence is what they call this. And surely at your trial, this will all come back to light and come back to bite. These are the kind of things I find to be sick, sad, and strange. right now but to the I know new who interview. he is I know who we he asked is. you that last interview you had no clue <laughs> you didn't now ask me you about my white it. pimps last time the nigga sharp said you know who the fuck white folks is you said, no I don't you didn't know who the fuck <laughs> he that told was. me who that was on FaceTime before the interview exactly happened. you yeah, didn't so know, didn't who, know white who white folks was. was until we informed you until, until sharp it, informed me on a FaceTime set, until, before this interview until a pimp informed you who white exactly but you know what I'm saying there's white pimps out there somebody informed you before this interview how it's blackface that seems like you're bringing up I mean the thing that's even crazier to me is the kid is so uh, he's i don't want to say so young but he even has metal braces which there's nothing wrong with metal braces except that if you grew up in orange county we would think your parents have enough money to get you invisalign right i mean spend a couple extra grand get that invisalign because you grew up in orange county my boy like there's affluence there it's really strange to to do a white child like that so maybe his parents were, were like the down bad people in orange county but all the same <laughs> he, he's now having an argument with suspect about him being aware of this pimp name, white folks, which is truthfully irrelevant. And more importantly, one, if I'm a illegal, if I'm a crime figure, drug dealing, scamming, uh, pimping, whatever, I don't want to be known. The successful ones are the ones we don't know of. The guys that we know of, those are unsuccessful criminals. El Chapo, he's an unsuccessful criminal. Where is he? He's in prison right now. Huh? Frank Lucas. There's a movie about him. American Gangster. He was an unsuccessful criminal, spent significant amounts of time in prison and then snitched to get out. Frank Matthews, on the other hand, very few people know about him. Why? Because he didn't snitch and he didn't get pinched. If you're a successful criminal, you want to be on the low. And the funny thing, too, is you got the imbeciles, the criminal rejects, the failures. They're all over the Internet and they all have cases, right? So what they'll do is they'll say, man, like, look at my rap sheet. I got cases for pimping and pandering. I got cases for living off the proceeds of a prostitute. And it's like they're proud of that as though going to jail is a mark of achievement. Going to jail is a mark of failure in your chosen profession. It's a mark of failure. That's what it is. I just wanted to make sure everyone knows because people are always trying to, you know, utilize that as like a stripe. That's not a strike. That's a black eye on your, your life. Yeah. That means you missed five or 10 years out of your life because of your inability to be silent and careful. Racism where it doesn't need no, to no, be no, no, no. That was just, a, um, that was just an analogy to get everybody to understand. I'm not saying that you were doing, it's, it's you said an I was doing blackface, to basically. get everybody to understand. Yeah. Because you, you, you pulled up in a pimp costume. He was saying it was like blackface, but is, is it the fact costume. that he's well, white in general or is the fact that no, he's no, no. so. Uh, shout out to George comes in by a cash app writes, happy Thanksgiving, peace to the saints, happy Thanks uh, Thanksgiving to you as well. And one thing that I think is pretty uh, curious and funny about the setup that we have here is you would think, number one, in this case, Adam is the star, right? So generally, you'd have the star centered. You know, if there's three persons, the star would be in the middle of the camera. And then secondly, if the moderator is Adam, you'd have him in the middle and you kind of have the two guys on the ends, you know, the, this guy versus this guy rather than having them next to one another, which is one of the things that makes me feel like this was a bit of a setup because the positioning of everyone doesn't quite add up to me. But, you know, we don't also want to assume that people or organizations are more strategic than they are. But 
You know, I tend to think twice about things. Oh, yeah, by the way, shout out to the ballers. Hustino writes, peace to the Saints tuition. And thank you for all of those uh, supporting on this particular holiday, which is about gratitude, about being thankful, showing what you're thankful for. So I, I do thank you all. And I'm very happy to have you all in my life and to have this community. So I do appreciate that. Oh, uh, new no. in the game. It's just he's it's, it's just because he's not really doing that shit in his head. <laughs> he came. But I like, am really doing that shit. My pocket like, will came, that. That's like, what's a good analogy? Well, I just gave one, like blackface, but let's do another one. Like, like, like a nigga who go to the gym with all the shit and he looking like he finna ball the fuck up. You feel me? And then when he get the ball, he can't do shit, but he came. I, I'm like this when you know, this how you know this brother is black. Cause I didn't seen this a million times. You heard me son then showed up in the J. He got the latest J's on. He got a headband. He got the Jordan armband on. You dig? Man, it's just dripped out as far as the appearance goes. You pass him the rock, he fumbling the ball. He's scared to shoot. He messing up the fast break. Yeah, I've seen this a million times. People like to look the part. They like to talk it, but they rarely walk it. You dig? Yes, I can understand when you get displeased, angry, because people are impersonating you. But one thing I would never do is try to prove who I am to a peon in general. It's just not, it's not a good use of time. If you're really a boss and you stay in your mindset of being a boss, does your boss ever come and explain himself to you as an employee? Does your boss ever show up and tell his underlings why he was late? No, if he was late, it just is what it is. You dig. But if you're late as an employee, you're going to need to explain. You got some explaining to do. So know that there is a difference. And I want you guys to observe my, not only what I say, but observe my actions. For example, you see, there have been times in the past I was talking with people who are dimwits and low lives. They ask me to explain something, they gets no explanation. He's a peon. And I ain't going to step out of a boss's character to explain to a peon. Let that hierarchy stay where it is. You dig? Oh, yeah. Shout out to the ballers who Stina came in. Just want to say that two times. Adam comes in and writes, happy Thanksgiving. Truly appreciate that, Adam. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. And may I also acknowledge Ishmael, who just ordered... Uh, the Sassin Varsity jacket. So, man, people are about to be dripped up this uh, this winter and warm, dripped up and warm. You dig? Same time. In his head, like this, is what ballers look like. I'm gonna get the headband, the socks, and all that <laughs> shit. You get what I'm saying? Like, but what if, that's what, what if I'm he saying. starts learning how to play ball, and then he starts balling harder than other motherfuckers? Right? Is he still impersonating at that point? Everybody's a little kid trying yeah, to be like Michael we, Jordan we at one point, somewhere. right? And then right? Well, uh, the next day, boom, yeah. you are Michael Jordan. You gotta crawl before you. I think Adam is probably off of a mean blunt right now, and he's having fun with this and the the gentleman suspect is rolling up a blunt as we speak or are you about to light one so clearly there's a little bit of mota in the air uh, so they're having fun with this i think the only person who's not really having fun with it is lil kelpie and that's because his self-worth is under the microscope right now and he's desperately trying to validate and verify himself whereas at a certain level when you really have it you don't really feel the need to prove it i mean Many times people have said, well, how much money are you worth? Like, what's your net worth? I'm like, you'll never know. <laughs> you'll never know. But keep your eyes open, you know, because people who have money, they know what things cost. And if you observe how I'm living, like you can probably assess which range I'm in. But I would never show a receipt or a bank statement or an ATM screenshot or anything like that. because That's just silly. And there's no need to put yourself in a spotlight that you don't want to be in. In fact, just recently, there was a. a couple that is in real estate they do a, a television show on home renovations and the american government basically has just sentenced the husband to jail time for not paying what uncle sam thinks they're owed in taxation and the point you should observe is that sometimes when you're too flashy um it doesn't go well you know the government wants to make an example out of you so unless you live in romania maybe then you can have 20 supercars but if you don't live in romania even if you can afford 20 supercars, you might just want to have one nice car uh, and stay low key. Let that be a lesson to all the hustlers. You dig? You can walk, bro. 
So everybody starts somewhere. And I feel like y'all were hating on that because not even the race thing, because I feel like we're all the same, no matter what color we are. But I feel like it's because of my age and because of how new I was to the game that y'all just attacked me for that it. That has nothing to do with that. I don't really? Feel like, I don't feel like you're That's new to shit. That's not what it seemed like. You hate I don't white feel people. Like you're, no, 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 no. I feel like you're not new to shit. I just feel like you're an impersonator for your SoundCloud career. You're not new to shit. Mm. But, bro, I don't even here. focus on music. You came up in here I focus talking on about the streets. You, I focus you on came money. talking about you prefer. Shout out to Suspect for calling a spade spade. He says, I feel like you're an impersonator and you're trying to get clout for your SoundCloud career. You're trying to be a SoundCloud rapper. And it's funny because this little Kelpie guy will do anything that gets attention and and maybe some money. It's primarily attention, though, because he's gone on No Jumper for free, right? And he went on Soft White Underbelly for free. So all this stuff is aimed at attention. And he, he's thinking maybe he can monetize it on the back end. But if he can't, it's all right because he really just wants the attention. And notice, I'm not saying the clout. I'm not in, I, I'd have to look up the word to see exactly what it should mean. But this kid wants the attention. And one thing I want to remind you all of, if we want to understand ourselves as human beings, you know, at a certain level, in a certain way, we are all seeking love. We rarely get that. We often get something that's not quite that. But we're all seeking love in a way. And you can understand our actions through seeking love or seeking sex or seeking money. I should really probably put those in uh, in order for you one day on an infographic. Professor, old school, and then you was like, "We yeah. we actually where you learned this shit from?" And then you said, "Yeah, I watched you. I watched Sharp on YouTube." Like, yeah, get the fuck out of here, nigga. Because I, no, I have no mentors in real life. Watch on. That was an important thing. I hope you guys heard what Young Kelpie, Young Kelpie. I didn't change the boy name. I I think you guys heard what Jonathan just said. He says, "Yeah, I have no mentors in real life." Now, what he's speaking of specifically is as far as that pimp and go. But I can tell you that based on his behavior and his thinking, he's an unschooled youth. He has no mentors in general, no male mentors. And so he's looking on YouTube trying to figure this world out. It's one thing to watch videos. It's yet another thing to interact with someone. It's yet another thing to shake a man's hand. It's yet another thing to put your hands into the earth with a man and build with him alongside him and learn in that way. And Lil Kelpie is has not had those experiences and we see it in his conduct and in his thinking and it really saddens me and that's why i wanted to invite him on this stream so that we could have a come to jesus moment on on youtube and in person and start getting money from it in the fucking streets nigga and get some real experience for what money all all these drill kids are looking at older drill rappers and fucking getting influenced by that right drilling though but he's really, really outside, outside Pippin. Pippin. He's not. <laughs> not really. He's not. Really, I brought two bitches he's with me. I ain't not. never seen none of your bitches. I don't mean he shit. Got some work on now, I want you guys to observe a couple changes. One thing that didn't change is that Adam was pretty much aloof throughout the entirety of the segment. He just there to have fun. He collecting the bag. He's there to have fun. Why not? Uh, suspect started off very up-tempo and pleasant, in my opinion. I found him to be a very lighthearted guy. Seemed like a cool cat to hang out with remind me of some cats i know uh now they're engaging in conflict and we see that suspect's temperature is escalating he hot and we see that little kelpie is arguing back and forth but he he's not angry he's arguing back and forth because he's like a broad you know broads will argue it's effortless takes no energy for them i don't think he knows what time it is this is an important thing to understand if you ever hang out with me, you'll notice I'm always I'm scanning the room. I want to know where the entrance is, where the exit is. I want to know who's coming in here. I want to have my back to the wall. I want to be either close to an exit or near a corner. You know, I always know what time it is. I know what time it is when nobody knows what time it is. I am hyper conscious because I always want to win. And also, I've been in some unfortunate situations and I said never again. You dig? Like, uh, you know, I had one situation where I ended up you know, getting uh, jumped and stabbed. And I said, you know what? If I was a little bit more thoughtful, I could prevent this, which is true. And I also said to myself, you know, if I die, I'd much rather go out like Rambo. You like, I don't want to go out, you know, being held down by a bunch of people, you know, and being uh, impaled with a blade, um, helpless. You know, I, I want to be able to fight back, but you got to be able to see things coming is the lesson. Right now, he doesn't see anything coming. You got Adam here who's, laughing and enjoying collecting the bag you got um suspect who feels like his identity is under threat suspect's identity is under threat because he identifies as a p 
And when you have a nerd identify under the same title, you're diminishing the title. Furthermore, in my book, there's one particular chapter when I came into a new uh, city and a new school. And it talks about how the people who are already there try to push you to the bottom of the hierarchy. It's chapter 11, Gangsterism 101. They try to push you to the bottom of the hierarchy, even if you deserve to be at the top. So Lil Kelpie comes in. He's like, oh, you're a P. I'm a P too. Well, what happens? Now he's put himself in competition because we're under the same title. Well, who's the king P? Who's, who's, the, who's the best P? Who's the highest earning P? Who's the flyest P? They're always going to push you to the bottom. And you can protest and you can fight. And that's the only way to get to the top. But sometimes you're fighting and you're boxing above your weight class and you're going to catch an L. The couch. None right. of your bitches. Right. None right. of your bitches. Because I'm really doing this shit. What the fuck I look like bringing some bitches in here? Really? You're a clown, well, nigga. Need- so Lil Kelpie has actually reflected the exact same insult back to Suspect that Suspect le- leveled at him. Suspect said, you're phony. You're not the pimping. Suspect was like, Maury, he was like, I have the results. You are not the pimping. And then Lil Kelpie was like, I am, I am. I am a P, I am a P. They call me Kelpie the P. And then he turns around and says, you know what, suspect? You're not the pimping. And now suspect is angry because his identity is under greater threat. And that's a dangerous thing to threaten a man's identity, his self view. People will fight you to protect their ego to protect their self identity. Yes. Like this, this is, let me give you an example. When you have a divorce and a man goes from being a millionaire to not being a millionaire and he viewed himself as a wealthy man after all these years of work, you're now threatening his identity. Yeah, that's how these these bad divorces occur and people are very angry and bitter and hold grudges and end up doing violence. Their identity is under threat. So he's threatened the identity of suspect and he's actually causing suspect to do something self-incriminating, which is unfortunate that suspect could be tricked out of his own position like that. So for example, suspect says, why would I bring some females in here? I'm really doing this. And that's an ironic statement. It's paradoxical because he's essentially saying, I'm really doing this, which is like, I'm really out here pimping. That's number one. So he's saying, I'm really pimping. Then he says, why would I bring women in here to suggest that bringing women around i.e. girls who work for him, would incriminate him. Well, you already said you're really doing this. That is incriminating. So it's a contradictory statement that doesn't actually quite make sense, and it seems as though he's trying to walk a tightrope of appearing authentic while not incriminating himself, and I think he's failing at both. Do I think he's a P? I don't know. I don't care. Do I think he's a fake P? I don't know. I don't care. Uh, I don't care because it doesn't make me money either way. I don't know because there's no evidence of that until I'm on the blade. I see him on the blade and I see his girls being sent out by him. But here's the thing. You should be a shadow. You should be a ghost, a phantom on the blade. They should see your girls. She's the one for sale. She needs to be marketed. The pimping needs to be in the shadows. So truth be told, if he was a good P, the only person that should know should be his banker or his accountant or the person who manages his safety deposit box. Huh? Let's learn something here. But everybody wants to pimp on prime time. Shout out to pitiful the P dophile. Yeah, they they want to pimp on prime time. And when and why do they want to pimp on prime time? Only after they've caught cases for this crime, and they can't get a proper job, and now they have to live through telling you war stories about their inability to be successful at their given profession, chosen profession, illegal profession. I'm not talking about suspect. I'm talking in general about internet peas. I'm not talking about suspect. I don't know them. Anyways, carrying on. Shout out to uh, Jinsali, 178. Directed by Jabrizi writes, happy Thanksgiving, brother. Happy to have you as a friend, saint, and to the assassin as well. Peace to the saints. Good to hear from you. You've been on my mind recently, actually. I uh, brought you up in the um, no jumper uh, interview, so I don't know how they'll they'll cut that up, but you know we we throwing out promo. You dig? Um, it's good to hear from you. Saying I'll see you soon. Uh, let's run a mission.
Nice piece of the same. That jacket is straight fire in a real way. And the funny thing, too, is there, there are levels to things. And you always have to be conscious about who you're around. It's a quick story. We'll get back to the main topic. Positioning is something I talk about. And, you know, there's certain things about you that communicate who you are and what level you're at. I was at a, I was in Los Angeles uh, yesterday and the day before yesterday, and I was at a car wash. And there was an older uh, gentleman. I, I thought maybe he's Latino. He was one of those people who could be any race. He just wasn't white. He was like a colored person who wasn't white, wasn't Asian. And eventually he says, hey, is that your car? I say, yeah, that's my car. He says, okay, do you race it? And I was like, nah, I don't race it. I was like, I, I drive too fast sometimes, but I don't race it. He's like, oh, I'm a part of the Porsche club in San Francisco, and I'm a part of this club in Los Angeles. I have properties in you know, the top and the bottom. He's like, I used to be a real skier, but my girlfriend made me stop. And I told her I'd stop when I turned uh, 70. It's like, I'm 85 now. He looked really good for 85. Uh, long story short, you know, of all the people in the place getting their cars washed, you know, we were the only two guys getting ours hand washed. And, you know, he had identified that it was my car and he decided to have a conversation with me because we're on similar levels. Whereas no one else in the area he wanted to talk to because he had already looked at them and says, well, you're down here and I don't want to associate with that kind of a person. He eventually gave me his contact info. He's like, hey, when you come up to the Bay Area, give me a call. And we drive through the Marin headlands and, you know, it's like a lot of well-off guys, you know, black guys like you and I, and you'll enjoy it. So that, that's good networking. I say that to say, like, you know, who you're around matters. And you also want to convey and represent yourself well and also keep an eye out for how people are representing themselves so you can deal with authentic people who are on level. You know, those are things that help in life. Carrying on. There's a little bit of game for you. You gonna get life for this shit. You gonna get life for playing around. So nigga, I'm go really doing this shit. What the fuck do I look like now. bringing Sounds some prostitutes fuck, in here? Nigga. He just told Lil Kelpie that Kelpie's going to get life for pretending, which is very possible that he'll get a significant sentence just for being a pretender, not even really doing it. And it's funny and sad. Uh, and then he also says, What do I look like bringing prostitutes in here? And, uh, you know, I just don't think any of this sounds good, truth be told. I think if I were a judge, I'd say, you know what? You are pretty much incriminating yourself. And I, I'm going to just take you at your word. I'm going to take you at your word. You're an honest man. I'm going to take you at your word. And uh, as a result, bang that gavel. You have 15 years for trafficking. Thank you. Goodbye. Just get the fuck. book through at them. We for get this money. Shit. This nigga's a clown. Judge, you a fucking this nigga's hater, a clown and an you're impersonator, hater, nigga. You're one of the fuck out of here, right nigga. There. You're a clown. Nigga, you're a clown, hater. nigga. Sus, fuck out of here, nah, nigga. You're a bum, right nigga. Listen Go right get some here, money, bro. nigga. You ain't no you nobody track, Mr. Every, old school. You ain't got no fucking money, nigga. Pull some money out. You broke ass, nigga. Fuck out of here, nigga. You a bum. Now, is anyone noticing that this this whole scenario is familiar right now? The the level of anger is familiar. The way the anger is even being conveyed is familiar. This is an exact rewind of when Sharp basically did the exact same number on Lil Kelpie. I think Lil Kelpie is a, a touch more uh, defensive and you know offensive uh, this time. I think he kind of got his balls together a bit. And I think part of that also comes from the fact that at the time that Sharp was roasting him, he actually admired Sharp. So he was talking to someone that he admired and respected, looked up to as a man. Whereas this time he's just talking to someone that he perhaps might view as sharp sidekick or someone that he was unfamiliar with. And so he's, he's kind of bucking up a little bit more. But as I've said many times, you should know who you're talking to and you should know what time it is. I don't think he knows who he's talking to. And I also don't think he knows what time it is. And one thing for squares that you should be aware of is that don't let a veneer confuse you as to what's underneath the veneer. For example, I hear the goofiest things on the internet. I, I think one guy uh, I saw in the comments, this made me chuckle. He said, you salsa dance. How can you be a tough guy? You salsa dance. I was like, I guess gangsters don't dance. Not that I'm a gangster, but I know a lot of gangsters that dance. In fact, they have a dance. It's called the Crip Walk or the Blood Walk if you're from where I'm from. You know, gangsters definitely dance. In fact, they, they crack jokes and all kinds of things. They might also slit your throat for foolish things you say. Um, and I say that to say this. When you notice the first portion of the interview, um, the gentleman named Suspect, which is a curious name I wouldn't want, but he was all smiles. Almost every time he was talking, he was smiling. He was upbeat, up-tempo, seemed like a friendly guy. Now it appears that a, a switch has been flipped and he don't seem so nice. <laughs> and I don't think that Lil Kelpie is properly estimating the 
rising temperature and suspect. And I don't think he has enough requisite experience to know how to cool the situation if that's what he wants or how to take the advantage, which is to swing first. And one of the major lessons in life I give you in the black box, and the reason I keep referencing it is because this contains everything you will deal with in life. Chapter two, it's called swing first. Let me let you know something. The first punch in a fight can also be the last punch. You best swing first. If it's going to pop off, oh, don't wait. Pop it off. You should be the one to pop it off. Swing first. Absolutely. That would have been my recommendation. You either need to cool the situation immediately or you need to pop off. And one thing I can tell you about street people, because we didn't done a lot and seen a lot. Oh, we not about to wait for you, little buddy. We're going to pop this off. Yes, indeed. And we're going to pop it off, not when it seems clear that it needs to pop off, but we're going to pop it off one moment before that so we can have the advantage. Absolutely. We don't want you to be ready. Ain't no fair ones. We're not friends, right? There's the ebook for you all that want to save a little bit of money. Here we go. Money Nigga, pull right out of here. That bitch is dusty Every as fuck. Fucking day, bro. That bitch is dusty and you ain't as got fuck. No bitches. One thing I don't appreciate, to be honest with you, is dishonesty and exaggeration. And when, and I don't know what Kelpie's girls look like. Uh, they might be dusty, but the truth is that it doesn't matter. She doesn't need to be a good looker to be a good hooker. I want everybody to know that. And furthermore, most hookers are not like above average attractive. They're mostly average, woefully average. Well, some of them might have some body on them, but it's rare that they're bad. Often when you find the bad ones, these are the renegades. These are the ones that think that they're so bad they can go off on their own. You know, the body's good, but the, the mind is bad. So, you know, these goofballs, they end up, you know, making a couple bucks here, buy a Chanel bag, and they're broke the next week, the next month. So when he's saying that uh, Kelpie's girls are dusty, I don't really respect that because you can, you, know, you can make a bag whether she's dusty or not. You know, most males are, they're real animals. They'll, they'll stick their penis into any orifice that's, uh, you know, wet and warm. So it doesn't really matter. I just want to state that because there's a lot of glamour associated with pimping and it's not a glamorous line of work. You're dealing with women who are incompetent, who have serious personality defects, who generally don't come from good families, uh, women who are very needy. Uh, you're not dealing with <laughs> like functional people. So let's not pretend as though like you got these gorgeous women who are also pleasant to be around. No, you have women who are average to below average typically. And they're not pleasant to be around, which is why they require a pimp hand yeah, to keep them in, in order, keep them working because they lazy. If they wasn't lazy, they have a real job. Anyways, he says that Lil Kelpie's girls are dusty. One thing that I surmise is Lil Kelpie being that he's 19, his girls are young and his girls are also white. He Kelpie couldn't manage any black girls or Latinas. You hear me? Let me just say that off rip. A girl who's culturally African-American or Latina, he, he doesn't have a pimp hand to manage that. But he's managing some suburban white girls, which is fine and very profitable. Because if you have suburban white girls that are young, oh, you can send them all around the world. You hear me? That's a flavor everybody likes. It's vanilla, right? When you go into the, the ice cream shop, people might prefer mint and chip. They might prefer, you know, pistachio. They prefer these other things, but they're always willing to have vanilla. No one says, I don't like vanilla. Some people might not like chocolate, strangely. Some people might not like pecan, but everyone's willing to deal with vanilla. You can sell young vanilla anywhere on earth. It's a great product, okay? So I'm just saying, from my perspective, nah, bro, you just insulting that man. You ain't I, got no that's fucking cool. bitches. I, I'll say that. That's cool. You ain't got no bitches. Because right, when the police watching, I don't have no bitches. I'm a podcaster. Let me just interrupt real quick. I'm a fans manager when the police let, ride. Let me just Clown interrupt ass, real quick. Nigga. He's you, super bro. mad right now. I like it. Oh. All right. Hold on. <laughs> People try to pull that ball. pull that out on Sharp and stuff, too. Like, yeah. where's your bitch? I'm going to be real. Like, they me and Sharp have money. been in the same group chat for like a couple of years at this yeah. point. So I've seen some of the girls they spend time with. He definitely has some attractive women in his life. I have no idea what their relationship is. But also, you know, you got to respect it. Like fucking if I had like all kinds of girls, I would probably try to keep some kind of distance between my professional life and bringing chicks around Thank all my employees. Forwarding this because it's not interesting. <laughs> Be the clown. Fuck you ain't gotta here. know who I am, fuck bro. Out of here. Fuck ben Franklin knows who I am, bitch. Fuck out of here. No. He knows who the who? fuck I am. I'm you getting money every day. I said, you Ben said. Franklin. Okay, so when, like, if you're if you're asking me, Marquette, when would you have fired on somebody? Right now, I would have fired on suspect ASAP. 
Boy, I would have fired on suspect immediately as soon as he said who and then lean forward. That lean forward, I'm like, you didn't invade in my space. I, I would have had to take off. You heard me like Jordan from the free throw line. I'd have had to take off like a private jet. You heard me? I'd have had to take off like an astronaut. Yeah, no, there's no way in hell you're about to who and then lean forward. To me, that's we got to boop, 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 boop. I got to tune you up. I got to. I don't know what you're about to do. There's no need to lean toward me. I feel threatened. I got to tune you up. I got to. That's when I like this posture you're observing right here, that lean forward posture where he has both of his toes down on the ground, where it's easy for him to stand up and lunge forward. I would have had to tune him up because I ain't got time to figure out what's really on his mind. I ain't got time like that. And look at little Kelpie's goofy butt right here. He's in a relaxed posture. <laughs> Not time to relax right now, my boy. Shout out to Walter. He writes, the P, original white folks in ATL, born 1948. Black whore mother conceived from a white trick. He identifies as black, although he is very fair. Ah, it happens. Yeah, absolutely. I hear that. I mean, Sharp is very fair. By very fair, I mean completely fair and looks Latino and has Latino great hair. But, you know, he, he identifies as African-American. Shout out. At the end of the day, you know, I really don't care what anyone identifies as, as long as, you know, the values are there. You know, how do you live? What do you believe in? And then I'm looking at your culture, right? Because your, your color doesn't really matter as much as your culture. The culture is going to tell me how you think, what you're likely to do. Your color ain't gonna tell me much because there's some black folks that are complete weirdos and i wonder like how like who whoa i didn't know we got down like that what's going on here here we go so right now i would have had to fire on suspect you dig <laughs> just because his posture he knows who the who? fuck i am bitch oh he didn't lean forward again oh my god my spidey senses would have been like just my tingle 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 my spidey senses would have been going off i'd have had to fire on him had to and to be honest with you, my first thought would have been, okay, if I fire on um, suspect and put his lights out, who do I have to fire on next? See, that's how I think. Because when I was coming up, people were in gangs, right? And if you're in the hood, you're dealing with hood people. They like to jump in the fights, right? So I'm asking myself, okay, when I cut his lights out, whose lights do I have to get cut, need to get cut out next? And so I'd have been thinking, okay, do I need to cut out Adam's lights? And you might be like, Quet, that's ruthless. That's not necessary. That has nothing to do with anything. Yeah, but it gets like that. I would have been asking, do I have to cut off Adam's lights? And I would have been saying, nah, I don't think I need to cut off his lights. I'm pretty sure he's just going to get up and get out of the way, which is what we expect white people to do in general, right? We expect white people like, oh my gosh, so what are they doing? The minorities, they like to fight. Oh my God, call the coppers. You know, so I would have, I would have probably uh, just tuned him up and been looking around to see if one of the suspect's partners are there. But I tell you one thing that I would not have done would I have showed up just me and two broads? Nah, not at all. Because even if you use the pimping, if these broads ain't about to be working, they don't even need to be around. I'd have showed up with my mans that are die and kill for me. That's what I would have done. Why? Because you have to know who your friends are and who your friends are not. Because someone's not your friend, that doesn't mean they're your enemy. But I can assure you, it's easier to become an enemy when you're not a friend, right? So I would have had to like pull up in there and make sure that you know somebody was there holding me down. That was going to hold me all the way down. Ben Frank, I'm calling you a bitch. Now, here's the funny thing. Now, Lil Kelpie called him a B-I-T-C-H. And I, I think that there are a couple ways that we need to understand this. One thing that absolutely shocked me when I left my neighborhood and then went to the University of California, Berkeley, and this got me into trouble a little bit early on, is that black folks in a ghetto, there's certain things you're not going to say to each other. It's just disrespectful. There's certain things you're not going to do to each other. But, you know, middle class or better white guys who grew up in Newport Beach or, you know, fill in the blank, Calabasas, um, you know, they say things to each other that we consider fighting words, but they ain't about to fight. They'll just like laugh and have a beer. Um, so, I think that's one of the reasons Lil Kelpie wasn't so thoughtful about his words. Just called that man a B-I-T-C-H, not once, but twice. He called him once, and then son said, wait, what, who you calling him? Who you calling to B? And Lil Kelpie was like, you. <laughs> I'm calling you a B, and I'm going to sit here like I didn't call you a B. That's so disrespectful, because truth be told, if I call somebody a B, I probably have to be like ready to like tee off on them. Truth be told, I probably have to tee off on you before I called you a B because once I call you a B, I feel like it's too late. I didn't give you that advantage to tee off on me. 
You don't talk to people like that. Do I think that suspect was justified in knocking Kelpie's block off? I think he did God's work. To be honest with you, I think, hey, suspect, suspect. Thank you. Thank you. He did God's work. Kelpie needed his block knocked off. And the nice part about it is that it wasn't in an alley where he was going to get beat unconscious and then continue getting beaten while unconscious. It was in a controlled environment. So, you know, he got slid one good time. And, uh, you know, may he learn his lesson. He probably won't because it sounded like he was talking reckless after it, which I like to see. You heard me. But um, don't talk reckless if you ain't going to, you know, be with the smoke. That's just my thing. That's my thing, bro. Anyways, let's see. Uh, let me just rewind it a little bit because I want you to observe the fact that you've seen suspect not only get up, but take several steps. And Lil Kelpie, for some strange reason, has like the reaction time of Joe Biden. Lil' Kelpie's still sitting there like ain't nothing about to happen. It's like he's watching a movie right now, not realizing this is an action movie and you're in it. <laughs> this is crazy. Look at this. I wish I could play this in slow motion. Matter of fact, I can. Let us give it a try. Here we go. I so you see suspect is leaning forward leaning forward i would have been already firing off on you he's leaning forward he's leaning forward kelpie just called him up b-i-t-c-h suspect said what now look right there that was another opportunity to react you could at least got out the way you could have ran at that point even if you couldn't quite fire back you could have ran right there let me let me maximize this for you guys this is outrageous this is absolutely outrageous. Look at this. Look, he's already up. Kelpie is looking down right now, which is absolutely strange. He has a completely relaxed posture. This man has time to take his headphones off. Headphones have come off. And now Kelpie is just realizing this movie seems a bit real. Maybe this is one of those 3D movies. You know, when you're sitting in the chair and they blow air at you and like, wind and like fake wind and like mist at you yeah this movie seems awfully realistic and kelpie still oh in that cute look at kelpie's dimple let me enlarge that kelpie has a dimple on his face he's about to get punched in the face he has a dimple that's so cute he ain't built for this life now number one a major function of a p is protection kelpie ain't protecting nobody kelpie can't protect himself he's not a goon okay and I hate to say anyone's not a goon because anyone has the potential to be a goon. And I don't like to underestimate anybody, but we can all see that Kelpie is cinnamon. You dig? The boy's sweet. Here we go. Now look at Adam's face too. This is hilarious. This is when Adam became a white guy. No, dis no disrespect to white guys, but come on, man. I mean, after 400 years of oppression, let me get a few jokes off, even if they might be slightly discriminatory. Come on. You know I'm not a racist against one group i'm getting everybody eventually don't worry look at adam's face adam right now is making that white guy face of, oh geez oh gosh uh, i'm glad i'm glad i'm not sitting where kelp the kelpster is sitting <laughs> adam is making that face of, hmm, i think i know what's happening here <laughs> i'm glad i'm not on the receiving end of this one <laughs> shout out to adam this man is chilling right now and the funny thing too here's the kicker this is what blows my mind how is it that Adam is not about to get punched, but somehow Adam is more aware of what's about to happen than Kelpie is? Kelpie looks like he still has that cute little dimple. He's not sure if suspect's coming over to give him a little kiss. Whereas Adam's face appears to be like, Kelpie, you're about to get fired on. Let's see if it's true. <laughs> uh, shout out to No Jumper for being smart. Um, because what you guys might not realize is that if you show a fight, um, your channel will be like mine has recently been, will be shadow banned because you're showing uh, graphic content. Yes, indeed. So, so now you see everyone basically pulling, um, politely, nicely pulling suspect off of Kelpie. Don't call me no bitch, you crazy. Hey, can I just show you guys one thing real quick? Because I, I want you guys to understand why it's never wise to underestimate another man, nor is it wise to think that things are sweet when they're not sweet. Let me just rewind to the beginning and look at the demeanor of suspect. Look at the radical difference. 
Look at the radical difference. Look, look at Suspect's demeanor. Look at his, look, aw, look at that nice smile. Look at Suspect. Let me play this for you. I'm going to enlarge this so you can see this nice smile. Hey. And then co-hosting with me. Big says Gabriel Displeasure, you know what I'm saying? Look at that nice smile. He seems like a nice guy. Like, honestly, I'd let this guy, like, babysit my nephew. I don't have a nephew, but I would let him babysit my nephew. He looks like a wholesome, nice guy. Aside from the blunt that he's holding in his hand. Yeah. Almighty for the album, because the record too short. You dig what I'm saying? No, the real deal. Yeah, you know a good time. He, feels. he chilling. No knock raid. They came in. They pulled me outside and, some and undercovers. Last I checked, nobody smokes a blunt so they can get mad. Last I checked, nobody smokes a blunt and then wants to get mad. I've never been a stoner, but I, I've, you know, I've been in the industry and I've seen a lot of folks who like to consume. Nobody smokes a blunt wanting to get angry. So I feel like rightfully we can say a suspect reacted reasonably to low Kelpie, right? Generally, people want to smoke a blunt and get some brain. They want to smoke a blunt, eat a sandwich. They want to smoke a blunt and chill. They want to smoke a blunt and forget about their problems. They want to smoke a blunt and think of ideas that they think are intelligent but are actually completely idiotic. But nobody wants to smoke a blunt and catch a fade. No one wants to do that, okay? Carrying on. Now, we saw he was really nice. And then he transforms, kind of like Bruce Jenner. He then transformed, and now we have this monster. You could tell that no one in the environment really cares anything about Lil Kelpie's safety because generally after someone has tried to sock you out, they're not going to just like unhand him so that he has free range to move about the environment, generally speaking. So no one actually cares about Kelpie's safety. This might've been a whole setup, but regardless of whether it was or was not, they all clearly favor suspect. Like he's their guy there on his team and Kelpie, they're like, Hey bro, like you gave us some good viral footage carrying on, <laughs> carrying on. And the nice thing is that Kelpie is so green and he wants to be a street guy that he's not going to like call the police and everyone is like, okay, cool. We got to, you know, knock this kid out, get some good footage and, and go from there. If you saw the real footage, um, you would have seen that Kelpie had like a, not a black eye. He, he had like a, a red eye, if you will. So he, he got served a little, little, little two piece, something nice. And, and shout out to suspect for being agile, quick and, uh, punching and you know he was throwing punches in bunches you dig he was punching in combination it's a beautiful thing he has a future you know dana white might tweet him one time now indeed <laughs> i said yeah, kelpie looked like a busted cherry yes indeed <laughs> major minus all rights if i was kelpie i would have turned it to training day i'm putting cases on all you bitches <laughs> you feel me that's probably his best recourse low-key Saints, I'll give you some time to send in your thoughts, questions, comments as we wind down. Um, uh, if you guys uh, so wish, if if you desire, um, I'm happy to go on to this interview that Kelpie did on this other uh, podcast. Um, otherwise, if no one wills it, then uh, we'll go ahead and wrap up. Uh, one thing I do want to note is that I notice a lot of folks don't have their essentials, particularly gentlemen. So I've tried to, you know, some essential pieces that are affordable. I've listed on my Amazon link, like for example, this shirt, this is called an Oxford, an Oxford dress shirt. And I just want to share this because I know as young men, you might not have a father necessarily to inform you on things or your father might be uh, perhaps a blue collar worker, a guy who doesn't necessarily have to dress up. So an Oxford shirt is one that has the button down collar and it has a thicker material. It's like a woven thicker cotton. And so it's more durable. It's going to last longer and you can dress it up or dress it down generally. So this is a black Oxford dress shirt. I put this on my Amazon link. I think I want to say it's like 20 bucks is it between 20 and 40. So which is to say it's very inexpensive. I also have a white Oxford. I, I didn't categorize it under the right thing. I think it's currently categorized under clothes, but I'm going to move it to the dress up essentials um, just so that you guys have these things. You know, if you're a young man, you should at least have a white dress shirt and a black dress shirt preferably Oxford, say, look good, dressed up or dressed down. He's right, that boy was bleeding. 
The Kelpster was bleeding. I'm sorry to hear that. A little Kelpie. Uh, can someone, t- what does that name mean? It sounds very corny. It has Lil, so we know that he was indeed trying to be a SoundCloud rapper because no one should voluntarily name themselves Lil if you're a grown man. That's not very ambitious. Doesn't speak well of your intentions in life. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't even know if it's him having street. It's just him having experience in ghettos or among a particular culture or just paying attention or just being raised well. I think if you were raised well, you'd know there's just certain things you don't say to people particularly when they're angry. <laughs> was this kid like autistic or something? Anyways, uh, saints, it has been a pleasure to have this time to fellowship with you. Let us end with our tradition, the creed of the assassin. Repeat after me with full conviction, knowing this is true of you, the creed of the assassin. I'm going to be who I truly am because I'm remarkable and I'm going to strive every moment to show the greatest part of who I am. Until next time, peace to the saints.